Welcome to the wonderful world of Sonos. So, you've just received your first speaker or speakers and you wonder how to configure it or them. Well, that's a good news because it's exactly what I'm going to show you in this video. First step, plug in all your devices. And if it's already done, congratulations, you can already skip to the next chapter or go straight forward to this time. By the way, on this channel, I always try to go straight to the point because I know your time is important and I know you don't want to listen to me tell you everything about my life. But there is a lot of things to say about configuring a Sonos system and I don't want to skip any important things. So if I ever explain something that you already know or you don't need to know, I have time break this video in several chapters in the timeline and in the description. So do not hesitate to skip to the next chapter if you ever get bored. So step number one, connecting all your Sonos devices. And that's a very easy thing to do for most of them because they only have one cable, which is the power cord. But if one of your Sonos devices, one that need to be connected to your TV, like a soundbar, the play bar, the beam, the arc, the port, the amp, one of those devices, well, it's a bit more technical. So I made a video for all of those speakers to show you how to connect it to your TV. You can find those video in the playlist just right here. Step number two, if you bought your Sonos speaker pre-owned, I highly recommend you reset them before we go any further. And I can show you how to do the reset for any of those speakers with the playlist on the upper right corner. If your speakers are brand new out of the box, well, we are ready for the next step. But before we go any further, I just want to add a little detail because what will follow happen on the app and the app have updates over the here, so some things might change a little bit. So if there is any minor change, I will add some details in the description. And if there is major change, well, you will see a video just right here, which will be my updated video. But if you don't see anything right now, that's because I didn't need to do an update video yet. The third thing you want to do is to download the app on your phone. You can find it on the Google Play Store on your Android and the App Store on your iPhone. And yes, some things may vary a little bit over the next step, so I will do it with both phones at the same time. At least, I'll try. There is also a version for Mac and Windows, but for the configuration, you will need a phone. So on the Android, I go in the Play Store, on the iPhone, I go in the App Store, and I will search for Sonos. So on iPhone, you may see some advertising at the top, uh, but the two first non-advertised app are the right one. So you see uh, there is Sonos and there is Sonos S1 controller. Those are the only two Sonos official app. So don't download any other things. But now which one you need, the Sonos or the Sonos S1? The easy answer to that is that unless you have buy a Sonos device that was originally released before 2010, the app you want is Sonos. The S1 application is for the older devices. If you want to know more about that S1 application, you can see my video on the upper right corner. And if by any chance the app you need for your Sonos system is the S1 app, the video you will want to watch for your setup is not this one, you will find the link in the description. And finally, if you're not able to find the application on your phone, I'll left you also a link in the description so you can download it directly from the Sonos website. But now I'm going to install the Sonos application. Fourth, this is a very important step. You have to make sure you are connected on your Wi-Fi network. No kidding, if you're connected on the LTE or your neighbor's Wi-Fi network, you will have some trouble in a few minutes. So on Android, drop down your finger from the top and hold down the Wi-Fi logo and make sure you're connected on the right network. This is Auto Network, that's fine for me. So let's go back to this. And on iOS, you will want to go into Settings into Wi-Fi and make sure, again, it's the right network. How to, that's fine for me. 
So I'm going back here and we're going to open both application. Okay, so now on uh, iOS, uh, Sonos would like to use the Bluetooth. Okay, Sonos would like to find and connect to device on your local network. Okay, and then skip and then view terms of use of usage. And then go down to the very button and then double tap the circle or the button at the bottom 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 this button the only button or whatever you need to do to go back to uh, the Sonos app and then accept and we are now at the same page so what we want to do is to set up a new system welcome to Sonos you will have to create an account so from that step, it's pretty much the same thing for both devices. So I'm going to drop down the iPhone for now. And I'm going to continue with the Android only. If you already have a Sonos account, you just have to sign in. Otherwise, you will have to create an account. It's possible you already have created an account while you have done your uh, Sonos order on their website. So let's create an account. Enter your email address you actually need to input a real email address because you will have to validate it in the next seconds so drop down the menu accept uh, sonos privacy statement and create an account so as you see on this page uh, we need to check our email so i should we say receive an email in the next seconds just right here got it sonos complete your account set up and you just press on verify email address. Oh, I can go on Google Chrome or directly on Sonos. So I will go on Sonos and your account is set up. Validate the email address is the only way to go further. So continue. Now we will need to allow some little stuff for the Sonos application on the Android system. So allow and Bluetooth, it's done. And there we are. So we've reached the setup page. And yes, you might see some of your Sonos device pop up just like this. You can close without snooze. And yet yeah, you will see all of your Sonos devices that want you to configure them so which one to take close without snooze to start when you set up a sonos device you have two options wi-fi or wired and wired doesn't mean you need to connect all your speaker with the wire there is a device that i like a lot which is the sonos boost this little guy the reason is that if you take all of your Sonos devices to the Wi-Fi, so anywhere they are in your house, they will always connect to the same Wi-Fi antenna. So this device here that is very close will have a better signal than this one, which is at the end of the house, very far away, two floor above, uh, on the other side of the house. And if you take a device, like the boost this one is actually connected to your router or a network switch with a network cable just like that and this one will emit a wireless signal only for Sonos devices and will create a mesh system this means that device at the other end of the house will speak with the closest speaker that will speak to the closest speaker and so on until it reach the Sonos Boost. Actually, you don't need absolutely a Sonos Boost. This is kind of a cheap device. Well, maybe not that cheap, but compared to a speaker, it's cheap. But I mean, you don't need a Sonos Boost because if you have a Sonos close to your router or network switch or a network outlet on the wall 
if you have a network cable all around your house well you can connect any sono speaker with the wire this will create almost the same thing as the sonos boost i said almost because it the Sonos Boost create a real strong network and the one from the speakers is a bit less stronger. So in short, a Sonos Boost or a wired speaker will create a more stable system with a greater range. Again, it's not essential. You don't need it. You can try it without it. Uh, if you don't have one right now, don't stop programming your Sonos system because you don't have one. But if you have trouble in the future with uh, mini cuts, so you listen, it cuts, skip, cut, skip, and it do it many times a day, this can solve your problem. And if you have trouble in the following minutes to set up your system because some speaker don't want to connect, well, this might solve your problem. If you want to know everything in details about the Sonos Boost, I've made a video on it just right here. And I'll leave you a link in the description if you need to order one. Oh, and I forget. The Sonos Boost, this little guy, is the only speaker that cannot connect to the Sonos Boost or the mesh system. This one only connect to Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. In my opinion, when you have a Sonos system, the most important thing is to have at least one Sonos device connected with the wire. So any speakers or a Sonos Boost. Sonos is the only wireless system that I believe in, that I fully trust, as long as you have at least one device connected with a wire. So, now that I connected, well, goes without snooze, and let's find that boost. The boost is the first device that we want to set up. If you have connected a device with a network cable, you can start by setting up this one. So if, by example, I connect my Sonos 1 just right here with the cable and I don't have a boost, I will start with this one. So I'll set up the boost first and for the Wi-Fi setup, we'll see it later when I'll configure the Sonos Move because this one only connects to the Wi-Fi. So boost, so I press add and uh, just wait a little bit and it will tell me where to press. The app will take you by the end over all of the steps. You can't really get lost. So as it's shown, there is an infinity button just right here. The infinity button is there for the synchronization. So I press on it and I wait. It will be like that for all of the next speakers. Your boost has been added. You can continue personalizing in the settings. All right. So now I'm just going to wait a little bit. And now I've got some other device I can configure. So we'll put this one down. And now I will configure uh, the Sonos 5. I want to do the 5. Add your, add your Sonos 5. All right. So I hit this one. So if, by example, you have 10 Sonos 5 and you don't know which one you are configuring, actually, it's not a problem. You just hit continue and the Sonos 5 will play a sound. So you will know that that's the one you're configuring. So it continue and it's going to do a sound like that. And it will become louder, louder, louder and louder. So if it's a speaker that is so far away, you will hear it eventually. And that last chime was to say, yes, you press on the button and now you just have to wait. All right. So now you can set up uh, this speaker into a room. So is it in the office, the TV room, the media room or something else? If it's something else, you can go to new location and give it a name. Uh, it can be outdoor. It can, well, don't put this outdoor, but uh, for the example, I'm just going to give the name of the speaker. So five. So continue and wait. 
It take a bit of time, but you just have to wait. This time is because it's really done. So now I have my first speaker and I want to do the other one. So I will go into the setting. If you don't see all of those speakers on top, you can always add speakers by going into system and add product. It will search for available devices and you'll be able to select one of them. So we've got the sub, Sonos One SL, One, Move, Port, Beam. We're gonna configure them all because I've choose those one for a reason. There is different type of setup. So what we will do now is to add the Sonos Move because I want to show you how to connect it to the Wi-Fi. So let's do add and wait for it. This one, this one is a little bit different because it goes on the Wi-Fi. Again, I can hear it, so I'm gonna press the infinity button at the back. And wait. Now, yes, this one is a little bit different because it connects to the Wi-Fi. So uh, the app recognized that the phone is connected to the O2 Wi-Fi network. Now it asks me for uh, the Wi-Fi password. So I give it, it connect and wait. So now uh, the phone sent to the move over Bluetooth, the Wi-Fi password and then the move will switch to the Wi-Fi and then uh, we will be able to see each other on the network over Wi-Fi. This is trouble you can have some time. It says Sonos move has been added but may not appear in the system tab. So press and hold the power button for five seconds to turn off the Sonos move back on the finished setup the system tab. So this is confirmation that it have work, but now I'm just going to press the power button on top and see just right here. It says it's offline. Power back on and yeah, not configured. Should be done real soon. Oh. So yes, I press on it. So let's finish adding your Sonos Move to your system. So continue linking your Sonos Move to your account. All right. All right, now it's done. Next one. So go back to system, add a product, wait for it. And now what we want to do is to create a stereo pair. To create a stereo pair, you need two identical speakers. In that case, it will be the Sonos One and the Sonos One SL, SL for speechless, because this one doesn't have a microphone. The Sonos One and the Sonos One SL are considered identical. A Sonos One and a Play One is not identical. You can have two Play 3, two uh, Sonos 5, Play 5, uh, not the move. Uh, so yeah, the, the table model one can be pair uh, to create a stereo pair. So one on the left, one on the right. So let's start with the Sonos One. So add, that's the SL, that's this one. Like that. So I press the button. And wait. Good. So this one will be set up for, let's say the bedroom. All right, and next, add a product. Now we're gonna do the Sonos One. Sonos One, add. There it is. And wait. I go on fast forward. It doesn't go as quick as you've seen on the video. I do fast forward every time so you can save a bit of time. Uh, yes, I want to create a stereo pair. Uh, I'm gonna set it in the same room, but I could put it on another room. In fact, you can have two product in the same room. So I, if, if I select bedroom, it will be bedroom two automatically. So yes, put it in the den, whatever. All right, 
hit down and it doesn't offer me right now to uh, do a stereo pair in fact if i had dropped it to bedroom it would have asked me if i want to create a stereo pair instantly but now i'm going to do it manually so i'm going to do i can go in bedroom or den whatever so let's go in the bedroom and set up a stereo pair when you do set up a stereo pair your both speaker need to be already linked to your account so you need to be able to see them from here so i'm gonna hit continue actually the only one i can add is uh, the uh, no let's add a stereo pair to bedroom yes continue and then i will choose uh the other one which is the one in the den uh, if you have more than one uh, if you want to be sure you can press on the speaker and it will play a chime on it like that so now i know that that's the one playing so yes i'm in the same room so yes that's fine and then yes now it asks me which one is playing right now that's the one on the left it's important because if you have uh, stereo audio that play from left to right you want to have the right one on the left <laughs> well whatever actually it's the left one that is playing so yes I'm gonna say it's the left one that I hear this way the left is on the left and the right is on the right and we just wait a little bit and it's done next one uh, go back here I'm gonna set up the beam so how to set up a soundbar All right let's find the beam add and wait press the button and wait All right, which room? Let's say TV room, continue. All right, done. Then we have this pop-up. Let's get the beam connected to your TV. And actually I can't do it because there isn't a TV connected to it. So I will, I will do this example with the arc, which is already connected to my television. Here I have the famous message from Sonos, which does ask me to complete the configuration of my Arc with my TV. If you don't see that message, you can always go redo the configuration into System, then in the room of your soundbar, you will see a button to configure your TV. So I'm going to click on Connect TV. About the connection, I already told you everything there is to say at the beginning, so I won't go over it again. I also left you a link in the upper right corner at the beginning. It won't show up right now, but if you go on the small i, you should find it. If you connected your soundbar into the HDMI ARC output, that's great. It will be super easy. Your television will speak with your soundbar and everything is done pretty much by itself. Now, if like I, your TV doesn't have an ARC output and you use the optical converter, press can't find ARC. This will take you to an article that you really don't need to read. Just go back and another option will be available. I don't have Hark. Click on continue and, well, at this step, Sonos invites you to turn off your TV speakers. This is to avoid that the TV speaker play at the same time as your soundbar. And there, it's very difficult for me to explain because they are hundreds of television brands and they're all different. On some model, it is also possible that you cannot deactivate it. So dig into your TV menu and try to find a way to turn them off. If you don't succeed, it's not the end of the world. At the end, you just have to lower the volume to zero. You can click TV speaker disabled. You will then be prompt to configure your remote. Well, if you manage to deactivate your TV speakers, it's great, it will be easy you can jump at this time. On the other hand, if you were unable to deactivate your speaker, you will have to use another remote to control the volume. The idea is that Sonos learn the infrared code from any IR remote to control itself. So if you're using the same remote as your television and its speaker are not deactivated, 
you will be controlling both television and soundbar speakers at the same time. At this point, you can use any IR remote or a universal remote control. Personally, I recommend the Logitech Harmony Companion. I'll left you a link in the description if you want to order one. It will be able to control absolutely every device connected to your television. If your remote control is Bluetooth, you will not be able to teach Sonos the IR code of your remote, because it doesn't emit any. In this case, you would also need a universal remote control. But if your television is Bluetooth, you are likely to have an HDMI ARC output, so that shouldn't be a problem for you, except if you have a Sonos Play Bar. If your television has an HDMI ARC output, the volume power information will be transmitted from the television to the soundbar over the HDMI cable. So, to learn the code of your remote control to Sonos, just do as instructed and press the volume plus on the remote control you're using to control your television. It's quite possible that you will only have to press it once and it will be over. If Sonos recognizes a code in its database, it will automatically set the volume down and mute. In my case, I use a Chromecast remote that I program as if I was controlling a Yamaha receiver. I don't have a Yamaha receiver at home. The goal is only to send signal to my television that the soundbar will recognize. And I teach to Sonos the Yamaha signal with my Chromecast remote. So I press volume plus three times while pointing my soundbar. If that doesn't work well, put new batteries in your remote. Then I press three times on volume minus and finally three times on mute. And there we are, it's over. The remote can now control my soundbar. What I want to do now, because when you have a soundbar with Sonos, I highly recommend you had a sub. The sub is not cheap. It costs a lot of money, but it's worth it. So I'm going to show you how to pair it with the beam. And it, will, it would be the same thing with a play bar, an arc, or whatever other device. You can, you can set the, the sub with the Sonos One, if you would like. And, well, it might look like a stupid idea, but it play really well. <laughs> so what you need to do first is to add the sub to the system. So I'm going to say again, add a product. And I will select the sub. So add. And this one you will see will have a little difference. Uh, the button is not the same because this one is a sub gen 2. It ha already have few years now and the logo look like this. It's too horror. If you buy the uh, new one, you will have the infinity button. Which room you want to set it? Uh, logically, I'm gonna say TV room and it's gonna ask me to pair it with the beam, I guess. So that has been had to the system. And yeah, would you like to connect your sub to a product in TV room? Yes, connect. Want to connect with the beam. And like I said, I can connect with the five. That's a good idea. It plays so well. Or with the, the pair of Sonos One. So uh, in this case, I will do it with uh, the beam. Select and wait for it. Voila, done. So at this point, they are paired together. But there is one more thing I would like to do is to set up a home theater. So this means the beam as the front speakers the sub as the sub, and I will take the Sonos Ones as surrounds. You can do surrounds with Play One, Sonos One, Play Three, Play Five, and Sonos Five. You can't do surround with uh, the Move. And like the stereo pair, you need two identical speakers. You can also do surrounds with uh, the Amp. So you can have the beam or the arc as your front uh, speakers and use the amp as surround. But now I'm gonna take the Sonos Ones as surrounds. 
For this, we need to go in system and that's a bit stupid, but if I want to take this pair of speakers as surrounds, first I need to broke that pair. So uh, I, did I go a bit too fast? Uh, I go in the, in the room and then I say remove stereo pair and remove. So they will be on link. Done. And then I can go back to the TV room plus sub. And yes, we can add a second sub. And I can set up surround. So continue. And yes, I want to have this one and this one. Yes. They will be removed from their original room. Yes, that's fine. Yes, that's fine. Which one is playing right now? I'm gonna imagine that my Sonos uh, beam is in front of me. I'm in my cinema. And actually the one is playing is on the left. So don't face your speaker to know which one is playing. Be in front of your TV and realize from which side the sound come from. So actually it's on the left. So I'm gonna hit this one and continue. All right, I now have a cinema. So as you can see on product, there is the beam, the one left, the one SL on the right, and the sub in the same room. That's pretty much all the setup we can do. You may have as much a speaker as you want. This will always be the same things. And now we've reached another step. True play. True play, unfortunately, you can find it on Android you will absolutely need an iPhone. Yes, because this option is only available on iPhone. And if like me, you don't have an iPhone, yes, actually I do have an iPhone, but I buy it only to do that tutorial. <laughs> so if you don't have an iPhone, call one of your friend and invite him for dinner. If you have an iPhone, of course. And at some point in the evening, borrow his iPhone and do the configuration with its iPhone. You can then leave. You don't have to do it right now. You can always do it later. This is a step you do only when your speakers are installed at their final place and that your room is well furnished. I mean, if you are actually moving, well, wait that everything is at its place, that your uh, dining table is at the place, your big furniture, the sofa, everything. Wait for the stuff to be in place before you do it, because otherwise you will have to do it again. Basically, what TruePlay does is that it corrects the imperfection of the room, like reverberation. By following the steps, you will see that, well, we'll do it together. So we go into system, and then we go in the room we want to uh, calibrate. Uh, I'm gonna pick the TV room because uh, this will be uh, the biggest true play you will have to do. If you take a single speakers, the configuration is a bit shorter. You skip the first part, in fact. So let's take TV room and then I go down to true play and then true play tuning and then continue and then yes you will have to remove uh, the case of your phone just to make sure that the uh, audio on the microphone is at its best so yes remove it if it's complicated to remove i don't care remove it you need to do it then begin tune in sonos would like to access your microphone okay and then prepare to measure the sound True play tuning use your iPhone microphone to listen to test tone. Background noise will affect tuning, so make sure your room is as quiet as you can. And yes, make sure it is. If there is other people in the room, ask them to leave and be quiet in another room. If your neighbors is actually mowing the grass, wait is done before you do it. 
make sure it is as quiet as possible. When I do it, I even turn off the ventilation. Okay, your fridge in the kitchen that you can hear a bit, it's fine. But make sure it's as silent as possible. And I'm gonna say continue. And then yes, explain a bit what we will have to do. The first step, we will have to, I'll say continue, sit where you watch. So actually I set up the TV room, so sit on your sofa at the place you will listen TV. You may have several places where you will listen TV, that's fine. It will play great everywhere, but sit at your main place. And if you are two and you have a three-place sofa, sit in the middle, that's fine. And then continue, yes, rotate your phone. And at the next step, well, continue, it says hold your phone just like this, at your eyes level. The idea is to have the microphone at your ears level. That's the idea. And hold your phone tight and make sure your finger doesn't move on it because otherwise your phone will hear this kind of noise. And make sure you don't breathe in the phone because that's what it's gonna hear. So hold it tight don't breath on it and hit continue and just wait and hit play. Sorry about the microphone audio, I've just realized that my card was full, so I've just come back from the microphone camera to the clip mic. So, let's keep going on. Next step, we will have to watch this little video. Yes, you need to watch it all. So, you will see there is this lady that going everywhere in the room and take its phone just like that. Let me explain you again. You hold your phone tight and you will move from up to down and take your phone and point up, point down, up, down while you're moving like this. I know it looks ridiculous, but it does a wonderful job. And make sure you move everywhere in your room. Don't stay at the same place and move just like this. You need to go everywhere and if you don't you will need to restart over and over again they will know if you don't move so move everywhere go up and down make little step and make sure you don't have shoes that will make noise every time you will put your feet on the ground move as quiet as possible so I'm gonna move up and say I'm ready to tune and start. <laughs>
And we are done. True play tuning successful. Finish. I know it looks really stupid, but it does a wonderful job. You can take your phone on the right side. And if you don't believe me, when you're done to do it, make some music play and come back to the settings. And from here, you can toggle from tuning, uh, true play tuning from off to on, to off to on and whatever. Try it, you will see it does a wonderful job. You will have to do it on every speakers of your house, except the Move, because the Move do like an auto true play while moving. So if you take it in a really small room, for, for example, like in uh, the bathroom, uh, listen to it a few seconds and in less than a minute, it will change the audio setup to adapt to the room. But for the other one, you will have to do it in every room. All right, now I come back to my Android phone because the screen is so much bigger and I like it more. Anyway, <laughs> so what we want to do next is to add music services. Because yes, Sonos is not wonderful only because they do great speakers that you can easily install everywhere inside your house and control it with an app that works like a charm. No, it's wonderful because they take all music services. So again, we go on the setting gear at the lower right corner and we go into service and voice. Yes, you can also add voice services I will not talk about it in that video because uh, you can add Google Assistant and Amazon Alexa, but that's something I really don't like. But if you want to do it, I already tested. Well, you just hit the assistant you want and it take you by the end. You will go into your uh, Google Assistant. Well, I'll do a video later on this, not on this one, because I think the application works really well. The button on the speaker works so fine. They work so much better than the voice assistant. Look in the description later. I will do a video about them, but not today. <laughs> Let's add music content. So all services, all music services are available inside the Sonos application. And if you don't find it on the main page, well, you can still go at the upper right corner and look for any application. They are all available. But for the example, I will go for YouTube Music and I will say Add to Sonos. They all have their way of adding it to the app. Uh, actually, I already have an account. They give me this number that I need to copy. So I press and hold, copy, and then I go on authorize, authorize. And this will take me to a web page on my phone. My phone is already connected to um, Google services. So I just paste the code and then I go on next. And then I can select my email address or use another one and connect to it. So this one, if you have a YouTube account like I with multiple account inside it, you choose the one you want and then you hit allow and continue to your device. So I can come back to Sonos application and then it's already in. Now they ask me for a name. This is a really fun thing because if you are multiple people in the house and everyone have its own account, well, you can all have your account of the same services. So I'm going to input my name. I'm Pascal and hit done. So actually Pascal will not be shown. If I go here in music and YouTube music, it will pop right into it. But if someone else has its own YouTube music account, the next time I will go into YouTube music, they will ask me, Hey, are you Pascal or are you Carl or whatever? That's why it's there. 
And once it's connected, you have everything. You have your library, you have your playlist, you have everything. And you can add as much services as you want. So that's it. Finally, you might think that's the moment where we start to listen music, but no, there is one last thing I would like to do with you. Well, actually, yes, you can start some music because we're going to do some EQ. So you will hear what you are modifying at the same time. So yes, start some music. And then we go on the setting here into system and then we choose the room that we want to adjust. So for example, I'm going to set up the Sonos 5. And then I will go on EQ. From here, the only thing I will do is to add bass plus two and treble plus two. This gives a bit of richness to the sound. I like it. That's the only thing I do. I do it for every speaker. And now if you have a uh, home cinema, so uh, with a sub and surround or just with a sub, I do this setup a bit differently. So what I'm gonna do is go into the TV room and then to EQ, what I will do here is bass minus two and treble plus two. The idea here is that I give a bit more treble here and less bass because I have a sub. So I want this speaker to give everything he can to the higher frequency and give more of the job to the sub for the lower frequency. So I'm gonna go back to sub audio and crank a little bit the sub level. This one, you will adjust it as you want. It's very personal. Some like it really high, some just a little bit more and some less. Well, it's up to you. So listen to the music, listen to the TV and adjust it as the way you want. And the last thing I want to do is in surround audio. There is the music playback here that by default is to ambient. Ambient is fine when you're watching TV. So uh, they do ambience. That's why the surround sound is here, is to do ambience. The car passing by, the helicopter, uh, the birds uh, whistling and all those stuff. But when I want to listen music, I don't want that my speakers play like ambient. I mean, when they play as ambient, it means they play at a lower volume. When I listen to music, I want that all of my speakers are playing at the same level. Otherwise, you won't barely hear them. So I go into this section and I hit full. This way, they play the same volume. And you can adjust the TV level, so when you're watching something that comes from the TV, and the music level for the surround audio. So if you want them to play louder when listening the TV, or less, you can do it right here. And if you want them louder, or just maybe not that full, just a little bit less, you can adjust it just right here. Try it, listen music, watch movie, and adjust it while you are watching it. There is also the surround distance, if you want to set the speaker uh, further away or closer. But when you do a true play settings, you can't move it because it's the true play that already have done that job. And that's it. You can come back and start to listen music. That's make the tour for that video. We have see everything there is to see to configure your system. Now, if you want to start to use your speakers and listen to music and know everything about uh, how to uh, select the music, create playlists, create favorite, how to use the button, how to have fun with your speaker, how to use it, I will do another video in the next few days and you will find the link in the description. For this video, we are done. Let's go have fun with your sonal system. So, this is it. Thank you for watching. I hope it helps. If yes, please give me a thumbs up. If you want to see my other Sonos tutorial, visit my link in the description or just right here. I have a lot of video on the subject.
Also, feel free to leave me a comment down below. Maybe you'll give me an idea for the next video. If you're shopping for a new Sonos device, please see my link in the description. And you should also see my video how to choose the right Sonos device for you just right here. And finally, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can find me back easily next time you need help. Take care and I hope to see you again, maybe on my main channel. See ya!